Good morning, Amina, and good morning to all the SEOs out there. Uh, welcome to another episode of SEOs Getting Coffee. Um, when this week we're meeting up to talk about competitor research, I believe. Yeah, competitor, competitor analysis. analysis. Competitor analysis and research. Well, do here you we go. Let's jump coffee, right in. Do you oh, have, I have your coffee, Do you have your coffee this week? Yes, of course I do. I learned my lesson last week. I haven't got much left though, but I do have some. So, honestly, you need better cups. All of your cups are like. I've got bit. some. I've got some. My one um, is a fishing one now. That's fishing. good. That's good. Yeah. We just have so we had some of these, you know, very kind of fancy ones that we had as a gift, and uh, I've got some novelty mugs as well. But I'm waiting till someone buys me world's best SEO mug. <laughs> That's what I'm looking forward to. Hint, hint. No, you're never anyway. going to that. <laughs> okay, let's jump right in. Competitor analysis. Amina, please tell me the definition or what you think competitor analysis is. Oh, well, you know, like, simply put it, it's basically looking at what the hell is your competitor doing in terms of SEO and other channels, by the way. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and trying to kind of see where they're getting the traffic, where they're getting the conversions and, and all the rest of the wonderful things that your competitor might be doing that might be interesting for you to know. Okay. And why would an SEO go down this route? Um, why do we why do we do these things, Mina? Well, why do we do these things? We do these things because <laughs> it, because it depends. It depends. It depends. It depends. It there there could be a lot of reasons why you do a competitor analysis, but it's the smart thing to do, particularly you know if you have competitors that are smashing it in the SEO game, and this is the other other kind of side of it. You don't do competitor analysis if you know that your competitor is absolutely you know pants online and is not doing anything that's worth of note uh, it's not about stealing the strategies this is the i will talk about this more but for me it's not about stealing the strategies and kind of taking their traffic or whatever it may be it's more about the learning the you know kind of knowing your market and what your market is doing which includes your competitors as well so yeah yeah i yeah. think i mean personally i i i love it right i love because i love having um uh you know a couple of competitors or even like one big you know big boy competitor that you're that you've got like with your with your client that you're working on if there's someone out there which is like oh here are the guys that are doing it really well because yeah. it's it's always it's always something that you can learn from people that are doing it really yeah. well and i think that's the case is it's like often of course there's you know the, the competition well, that's why it's obviously competitive but it's like Yes, there's a competition, but actually you've got so much to learn from people that are doing it well. So if your competitor yeah. is smashing it on some area, you can learn from that because you can learn and analyze what works. So if you can, yeah. you know, if you can, you know, get if you can get an insight into what's working really well, then the idea is that you take that as inspiration and you work out, well, can I do the same strategy, but can I do it better? But also yeah. it's like, well, actually what are they doing well but do they have any gaps are they missing any areas so is there like a particular topic or a particular thing within something that they're doing really well that they're missing that they haven't got yet that you could go ah hang on a second there's where we can fill that gap um so yeah i, I for one like i just that you know it's, it's one of the one of the greatest strategies i think to have it's like you know because if you've got somebody doing something well you know, you yeah. you can reverse engineer that and it, and it gives you the inspiration yeah. of like, you, because you've already got the case study or, or what Google's liking, you know, Google's liking mm -hmm. something, you know, so. Yeah. yeah, and it's also, I, I always find it interesting for, you know, that bit about inspiration. And this is where kind of it becomes a little bit blurred, whether it's a competitor or not. So you might have a company who is not doing very well and wants to do SEO. Um, and in their space, there isn't a lot of people who are doing SEO and they're doing it well, which is great on the one hand, because chances are they're going to rank better and, you know, it's going to be easier to get them on the map. But I also like to kind of find out who do they admire that is maybe in an adjacent um, sector or something that's yeah. related, something that their customers also uh, are frequently visiting 
because that gives you that inspiration bit. It gives you like a lot of ideas of where that client wants to go with their content, uh, where it wants to go with their links and stuff. But we can get into what, what you should be looking at when you're doing a competitor analysis. Yeah, absolutely. I think the key the key thing really is that it's it's like once again, I know we often kind of go back to this, but it's all it's all based on obviously the user experience. It's like all based on well, you know, uh, you know, competitor analysis and using competitors as an inspiration source and like a way to kind of you know start to direct your SEO strategy is it's it's a way to obviously put the users first. In as long as you approach it in a way which is like well you're looking at ways in which you can improve on what's already out there. Okay. So how can you do something better? Because you know, that already works and that's already ranking. How could you do it for your site and how could you do it better? What information are they missing? What extra questions are they not, have they not got on there? You know, what, yeah. what are people, what is the extra thing that you can add into yeah. that conversation, that discussion that's going to give people an even better yeah. Um, experience right experience. when they come yeah, to yeah exactly to, how can you serve her, so. the customer how can you serve the customer better um, yeah what would you put that's... in a competitor analysis what would i put in there yeah what um, element well the, the the main thing well like i my process usually is obviously you know it's it's like you say it's not obviously just stuck to you know having someone that say like your direct competitor I always like to get an idea of like, well, what websites do you like as well? So if somebody's, you know, asking and, and talking about, you know, well, it might be a related industry, but what websites do you like? What content do you like? What content do you think is done well online? So, you know, you might get people that might be, you know, going, well, actually, I, I really like this, you know, um, uh, this childcare blog, right? Or gives you tips about, or they might like this and <clears throat> gets an, a, a way to understand, you know, what's actually appealing to them. It gets them to think, and gets clients to think about what content works for them when they are searching because then when you apply that to you know business and to your your actual website where you're obviously trying to generate and build you know um organic traffic it helps you to put yourself in the mindset of obviously your, your customer so that's one one key thing is to not only obviously stick to you know the, obviously yeah. the direct competitors also to look for inspiration from other sources as well to help you yeah. get into that position and then second from there, it's then kind of looking at what I like to do, competitor analysis, is first of all is look, say if you get a site, is try to look at the percentage of where their traffic's coming from. So percentage of keywords, mm. but percentage of traffic. So if you get yeah. like a site that has, you know, 20% of traffic that's coming from a certain sub uh, folder of their subdirectory, like so if you've got, you know, let's just say they've got a topic that's un under a sub uh, subfolder on their site, is that if they've got like 20% of all of their traffic coming from there, it's like, oh, that's interesting. That's driving a lot of traffic for them in terms of their, or, you know, or if they've, or if it, sometimes in some cases it's even larger, you know, um, mm. and that's always a good place to go. Ah, there we go. There's an opportunity um, to start, you know, yeah. on, on that journey. So, yeah, this is, this is, this is it. I mean, we obviously have templates and stuff that, that we use and not everything should be templated. It's not about kind of checklist or something. And one of the things that I always advocate is again, this like multi channel, multi, like a multifaceted approach to competitor analysis. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, oh, you know, you know, our template, we developed it together. We look at you look at keywords, you also look at um, branded, non-branded, in particular, the non-branded keywords. This is very yeah. important when you're doing the analysis. You need to kind of get rid of the brand ones because those are helpful in different ways. In other ways, they're helpful when you're looking at link, link building strategies and stuff. But in terms of ranking, um, what presumingly you are ranking for your brand already so you look at the non-branded keywords then you look at uh links so who's linking to them what how it's it's really interesting because there is rather than just downloading a list of links from um a website like href which is great for linking and competitor analysis um for particularly for smaller sites get a sample of what kind of links they have and try and categorize them are they blogs is it the home page is it the, so what type of links are they getting to try mm -hmm. and get an insight into 
what strategies they are using in link building in particular. Um, so, for example, if you if most of their links kind of come from this amazing piece of research that they did, um, that is, you know, like proprietary research on a topic, you can assume and you see that a lot of the links are off of a press release that has been sent. You can assume that they're doing a lot of digital PR, organic link building. Mm. One of the other ones that we found in one of our clients, which was really interesting, and you should put these examples in your competitor analysis to kind of um, demonstrate the point, is privacy policy. I mean, one of our clients was getting links from, the competitor was getting links from amazing links from massive websites just because yeah Yeah, yeah, just because (laughs) they had the links in the privacy they were linking to their privacy policy and it was a follow link as well which yeah it's an interesting strategy because with the cookie especially now yeah but it's also like it's also like a necessity as well with like gdpr regulations and things like that that... it's coming in it's one of it's it's by law you have to kind of like do these things and it's Mm. a great opportunity to get some links particularly if 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 you can get a follow link from these massive sites yeah Yeah. the other thing that you look at is stuff like core website vitals for example they're not everything but it gives you an idea of the performance the ux side of your competitor yeah Uh, another thing where the other channels come in because everything is is connected i always look at a bit from their paid are they doing google ads are they doing linkedin ads for Mm -hmm. b2b what ads they are doing and put examples of that as well because Again, we're talking about all of these channels working together. And when you're doing a competitor analysis, even if you're doing it just for SEO, you should be looking at those other things. Yeah. And connected to that is obviously also looking at their social media channels. You know, do they have yeah. them? What do they have? What is kind of the strategy there? I mean, it mm-hmm. takes you for a proper competitor analysis. It will take you quite a bit of time to do. Mm-hmm. But it's worth doing. Not all the time. You know, if yeah. you have a little website, as I said, not a lot of competition, they're not doing a lot online, you're not going to do a full in-depth dive. Yeah. But for a lot of sites, it's, it, it just does make sense to kind of really, really look at a multifaceted approach to it rather than yeah. um, just downloading something from a tool. Yeah, but that's that's the thing is that, you know, I think, you know, the, the the marketing strategies need to adapt a lot more these days to be, you know, you, you need to be more efficient. I think these are the best way. And, um, you know, is is try to marry up the different departments with the different channels and try to, you know, like instead of wasting resources, trying to do different strategies all at the same time, like a different strategy with social media, different strategy with SEO, different strategy with, um, <clears throat> you know, any channel right it's like everyone's producing their own content is is try to have at least like you know your your main kind of pool of content that you're working from your main topic so if you are producing like you know competitor analysis you start you find like a great topic that you work on the idea is that you know you can use that yeah you can use it obviously for seo but actually that filters out throughout the different channels as well so you can use that same content and you can repurpose it and to, for for those different channels to make. So you know, if you, if you are, you know, in a situation where a lot of teams and internal teams are at the moment, where you know they they can't afford to be all doing different things, they need to work from the you know sing from the same hymn sheet. They need to, you know, be be looking to um, yeah, be in a situation where they can you know kind of kill two birds with one stone and approach it in a much more efficient way of using. SEO content yeah. or using your content and, and actually having it for a variety of your different channels, you know? Um, so the, you know, so the competitive analysis doesn't just stop with SEO and doesn't just, you know, it's obviously it's no. a great, you know, it's a massive part and it's and the starting, but it, you know, but there's so much more. Um, and it's, you know. it feeds into everything. You can have a situation where you find out that actually one of the pages from your competitor, that's really driving traffic and that's really you know it's is a popular kind of page is a podcast page let's say they have yeah, yeah, an yeah, amazing yeah. podcast you found that out like, using like SEO's SEO. getting coffee you know yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> well we are yeah we're we're 
we I'd, say we're, we're, I'd, say, I'd say we're a modest uh yeah, we have a modest, modest following we we're had getting there we had know, 20 it's... we had 21 views last week Amina. that's nothing to grumble yeah. at no to be fair we should kind of like listen to our own advice and do a bit more on the distribution <laughs> if classic classic but, seo mistake yeah exactly you know you practicing do every, what we it, preach yeah, yeah, that's it. But coming back to my point, you could find out that a podcast page is a lot, you know, everybody's linking to a particular podcast or whatever. Yeah. You are going, that's not going to necessarily be an SEO task. You know, you would optimize your podcast pages and we can, you know, talk about that in another episode. But that will then, you know, that informs you that actually maybe that podcasting as a channel is actually quite good and popular and a good strategy for you as a brand. Just by mm. looking at the SEO, you know, the competitor analysis in the SEO field, you can find out a lot about other areas and uh, other strategies that you might want to employ in other channels. So, yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of it, but I don't think it should be. And you got to be careful. I mean, that that some people, the way that they, you've probably heard, everybody's heard about like the 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 SEO heist. The traffic highs. Yes. From, yeah, yeah, yeah. from yeah. Jake. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. He's um, a good SEO. So, you know, from what I've but it was just but it's crazy. a really it's a really I mean, yeah, but it's a really good PR piece, but it but it brings, you know, and that I think that's weird. And uh, I'll tell you what, actually, I can actually share my screen because I've got it up in another tab. Give me a second. I can't believe that you were looking at that again. <laughs> I was. I prepare for these uh, calls that we have, Mina. I do my research. Well, I want to kind of say I prepare for them, but it's not really. Here we sure. go. Look. Oh wow! So look at that. So this, just for context, yeah. uh, you know, this this is the one that we're talking about. This particular uh, SEO heist tweet um, from Jake Woolwich. It basically this thread that illustrates um, on X dot com. Not no longer Twitter. Let's just be oh God, uh, don't accurate. Call it there. X. Nobody um, nobody calls it X. <clears throat> so this t uh, Twitter thread um, where he explains obviously the SEO heist that they they pulled off. Um, but I guess that that opened up a lot of these um, you know conversations really um, because essentially when in terms of like competitor you know competitor analysis is that that's the the the, the misconception. It's not it's not about it's not approaching it by like stealing and like you know like stealing traffic from a, a site or what whatever that's not the correct approach the correct approach is like we were saying before is like user experience first it's looking about how you know the correct way you know the kind of white hat way if we want to call it that of doing it is that you you're in a position where it's like look we're just trying to produce improved content for users so if we yeah. focus on the users and we just say, well, this is what our competitors doing, but we can do a better job. We're going to, you know, we're going to do uh, the same content and take inspiration from them. We're going to adapt it and make it better and expand upon it. That's yeah. essentially what we do anyway, right? As humans, right? Yeah, we try exactly. to improve and improve and improve. However, this, the kind of idea of stealing, and that's where obviously that, 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 tweet obviously caused uh controversy is because it's obviously positioned as as stealing as such it's like we stole all it's this traffic also you know? it's also how it was done yeah nobody can tell me that from a user point of view taking doing a competitive analysis and then doing the same thing using ai on mass is better for the user so that is the, that's kind of, and, yeah, and he the, didn't, I mean, the, the site, from what I understand, the site, you know, it, it, it didn't last long, you know, it's, well, it's, it's that yeah, that's, that's of, the other thing is it kind of shows that, you know, I mean, this, this is one of the positions that we'll be in with AI is that we will have these tools that can do this stuff. Right. But the, what we need to do is decide and manage that process and actually go, well, mm -hmm. This tool is possible, but it does not mean that we can just, you know, scrape everything, quickly republish it, put it online and basically churn and burn approach. Right. It's like churn yeah. and burn. It's that kind of age old kind of black hat technique that doesn't hasn't really gone away. It's churn and burn, make loads of money. Site goes, crashes down, do it all over again. Right. Yeah. And in terms yeah, of you exactly. know referencing, obviously, the, the Verge article from recently as well, this kind of, you know, um breaking the internet type of thing this is where those kind of issues develop from is because there are 
you know, opportunists and people that will be doing that kind of approach. Whereas actually it's the possibility of, of having that technology is excellent for us, right? It's a new tool. It's new technology. It's brilliant, right? Yeah. However, it's about how you actually use it for the correct purpose and correct and ethically and, and correctly. Like, yes, yeah. you can do churn and burn approach, but you, it will burn. Like, that's the thing is that like, yeah, exactly. I think I, I'm not sure whether, you know, that from that particular um, project and that particular case study, yeah, or what, apparently that thread, yes. you know, apparently yes. literally did it go up and then down? Yeah. I think the other thing, yeah. the other mistake people make is that like, uh, there's been evidence to, when people actually do share the results for things like this on Twitter and stuff, is it's almost like instantly they share it and instantly oh God, they yeah. get the tra traffic drop. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, uh, look at me, I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. <laughs> kind of, yeah. But it's, yeah. But, you know, but but look, everybody was talking about him and everybody's talking about it. So it's an excellent PR piece. Um, oh, no. Like, you know, from a PR um, perspective. But as I said, it's this, this is the, and this is where kind of like competitor analysis maybe gets its like sometimes bad rap. Uh, it's the understanding, as we were talking about, because you got to like, where's the user in that example? There's no user yeah. in that example. There's a bunch yeah, yeah. of, you know, quickly produced it's like, yeah, AI you know, pieces okay, that are not better. Created like nearly 2000 articles uh, with AI. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. You know, what's the quality of those? Yeah, yeah, you might just go, oh, great, loads of traffic. But it's like, well, actually, you know, what, what does it, you know, what, 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 are, what are those articles actually like? You know, are they even coherent? But I think this is one of the things why Google SERP is in such a mess at the moment is because at the moment it doesn't seem as if Google can really distinguish, you know, yeah. what is how it's meant to judge this stuff. Because obviously yeah. it is get it is getting yeah. gained, right? Google's getting gained yeah, yeah. into kind of ranking AI content that's really poor. And that's the thing. I'd right like to see, you know, all of these, um, you know, when you take a competitor analysis and you do this kind of like en masse AI approach to it. I'd like to see what conversions are like. I want yeah, to see yeah, if yeah, that yeah. traffic, yeah. you know, because that's going to tell you whether the content is better yeah. as well. But you know, are people that's... kind of getting something more and convert? And I, yeah. I have to say, I'm very skeptical. I don't think they are. I, I, yeah. Looking at, I've been playing with AI so much now, and the quality of the content uh, is just, yeah. It's very questionable. So I don't think. Yeah, but that's it. You really have to. You better. really have to train it, and you have to take. You know, you have to hold its hand, and you have to, you know, really help it to produce the stuff that you want to see. And often, yeah, you can kind of, you know, use it to to help your processes and things. But realistically, like it's you know, to get yeah. to get an AI assisted article, you need to put in a lot of legwork. So it does increase productivity, but to have an AI article that's actually really, you know good for the user you really have to put still put in a lot of work to kind of you know get the best out of it it's not in a position where you still where it's, have you know... to edit it and you still have to yeah, put subject yeah. matter experts yeah. and then there's yeah. this whole like thing about like original thought that yeah. is never going to happen with ai it's not actual intelligence so. i don't know but anyway we know. digress Who are knows? we going back to the competitor maybe i mean going back to the competitor research and stuff so we have a good we have a good template and we've given some advice on on how people can approach it. Do we is there anything else you want to say or are we for a No, room I mean I think you know that's, yeah that's that's pretty good I think. I think we can move on to room 404. Um you know I, I you know compare I think like I said it's one of my favorite things to do is like when someone says like oh we've got this competitor that's been driving us mad, you know, and it's, oh, and it's yeah, like, yeah, I like, I'm like great. Well. This is really good. This is a great starting yeah. point because it's like, you know, you can, because they're obviously doing something good, you know, they're obviously doing something well and they're getting rewarded, rewarded for it. So that's always a great mm -hmm. starting point for any kind of SEO strategy. So, yeah, but um, yeah, let's move on to room 404. Um, and this week in room 404, um, I'm keen to hear your suggestion, Rina, of what we, we need to, because uh, surprisingly, um, I can't think of anything other than my cold um, and the whole family being quite sick this week. Um, I can't think of, I can't think of much that I'd, that's actually annoyed me, which is very strange. Um, so yeah. yeah. Well, I'm easily annoyed and I probably, <laughs> I probably have a, a few of those 
every week. One of the things that has been going around, we're, we're, we're having this article uh, soon up around duplicate content and stuff. And, and Natalie, I mean, Natalie Fraser from uh, LinkedIn, and she's a big SEO, um, a great SEO or an amazing woman. It's like she takes thoughts out of my head. I was looking at the one that we've written uh, that somebody written a junior SEO has written an article for us and I was reviewing it and one of the things that was in there that completely like oh, I was like, it, it, this it shows kind of how myths are perpetuated especially if you don't have the experience was around duplicate content penalties I mean penalties that's that's okay the thing. And Natalie was like the day after she had it as well as one of her like SEO tips, which are absolutely oh, love. Okay, yeah. And there is still this myth that happens. You know, obviously the junior SEO was doing research and duplicate content and looking at some of our clients, but somewhere this person has found this myth around there is such a thing as a Google penalty for duplicate content. There isn't. There is no yeah. yeah penalty for duplicate you it can impact your ranking to a certain extent um and that needs to be it needs to you know you have to be really serious it needs to be seriously problematic yeah uh but there well, is no, like, no clarify, manual penalty let's yeah, there's, there's, there's clarify there's no manual duplicate penalty. content is you know best avoided you know this is yeah. what we're saying is that you know you shouldn't shouldn't be shouldn't be doing it duplicate content however the, so you're suggesting that the SEO myth that we need to banish to room 404 is that you cannot receive a penalty for having duplicate content. Yeah, the okay. the idea that you can receive a penalty, that's what I okay. wanted the okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. for, because yeah, yeah, you can't. Yeah. There is no such yeah. thing. <clears throat> yeah, so. well, that's it. I think, you know, I think you can be... Uh, that's the th I guess that's where the confusion comes from, is that you can be penalised in terms of, like, the word penalized like as a you know you can be pe your your site can be penalized in the sense that you might lose rankings and you know you might have some you know detrimental effects of having duplicate content but in terms of an actual manual action penalization strike yeah, or you anything won't you know see you, it you, there. You, you, you won't see yeah, it there yeah, yeah, you, I, yeah you've never i've never in my career and seen like in the penalties uh, in google search console saying You've been, you know, like because of because of duplicate content, and you can see yeah, it yeah, for yeah. like links yeah. and stuff like that. That's common, but not duplicate con content. Yeah. It's just not not a penalty. Cool. Yeah. Maybe we should do some more SEO myths that get banished to room four hundred four. Yeah. Well, I Maybe have we a should. full list. Cool. Let's uh, let's do one next week. I I already have one that's been bugging me. Uh, so, but I won't. I won't talk about it now. I could well, go on forever. Save that for next week. We'll leave that on a cliffhanger then for our audience. Tum, 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 is that they have to tune into the next episode to hear the next SEO myth. That's, the twenty-one um, view viewers. Yeah, our twenty-one viewers. Yeah, that we that we got last week. Um, who hopefully they'll be returning viewers. I'm hoping. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, but thank you very yeah. much, everyone. It's been great to uh, catch up again, Amina. Um, We'll be back, yeah, next week, uh, most likely. Um, you know, health permitting that this cold doesn't take hold and we all get ill once again in this cold and flu season. Uh, but nonetheless, please uh, let us know if you've got any comments. We'd love to hear from from you and your opinions. Your you know discussion is what it's all about in the SEO industry. So we'd love to hear from you. Um, and yeah, we'll be back uh, next week with another episode. So I uh, look forward to seeing you. Then. Thank you very much, Amina. I'll see you later. Thank you, Sean. Take care, Bye, everyone. everyone. Goodbye.